Welcome to our lecture online. So how do we come up with the equation for this circle knowing where the foci are and knowing that the length of the string used to draw the ellipse is equal to 10, 10 units, whatever the units are. And so we know that d1 plus d2, the two ends of the string, so to speak, add up to a length of 10. We're going to use the distance formula to do that, and in order to use that effectively, let's draw a perpendicular line there. Whoop, that's supposed to be a line. Let's try that again. There we go, perpendicular line. Now we can see that d1 is going to be equal to the square root of the sum of the squares of the two sides of the triangle. All right, so the height of this triangle, of course, since that's the general point x, y, the height of the triangle will be y, and then the length of this triangle will be x minus a minus 3. So this distance here will be x minus a minus 3. So now that we know what that is equal to, we can say that d1 is equal to the square root of the quantity x, x minus a minus 3, which is essentially x plus 3, quantity squared, plus this side squared, which is y squared. And we can do the same for d2. d2 will be equal to, well, the height here is y, but what is this distance? This distance can be written as x minus 3. Now, of course, since 3 is bigger than x in this picture, that would be a negative number, but we really don't care because when we square it, we get the correct value anyway. So this would be the square root of x minus 3 quantity squared plus y squared. So now we've established the d1 and d2 for any point along that ellipse. We know that the sum of those two equals 10. d1 plus d2 equals 10. So therefore, we can say that the square root of x plus 3 squared plus y squared plus the square root of x minus 3 squared plus y squared must equal 10. d1 plus d2 equals 10. And from that, we should be able to get the equation of that ellipse. Well, first we need to separate the radical, so let's move this to the other side. So we end up with the square root of x plus 3 quantity squared plus y squared is equal to 10 minus the square root of x minus 3 squared plus y squared. Okay, now we can go ahead and square both sides. I need my other color, so I can show you what we're doing. So we're going to square the left side, and we're going to square the right side to get rid of those radicals. Of course, we're only going to be partially successful, so we'll probably have to do it twice. All right, here that's easy. When we square that, we simply get the quantity x plus 3 squared plus y squared. And on the right side, we take the first term squared, which is 100, plus twice the product of these two, but with the negative, we get minus 20 times the square root of x minus 3 squared plus y squared, and then plus the last term squared, so plus the last term squared that will get rid of this negative sign, so we end up with x minus 3 squared plus y squared. All right, ah, that looks like a pretty bad equation, but we can immediately Simplify it a little bit. We have a y squared on the left side and we have a y squared on the right side. So that can cancel out. Now we just have to work out the rest. Let's do that. Let's multiply. Uh, no, we can't. It's an x plus 3 and an x minus 3. So we can't. Yep. Yep. It's in algebra. It's easy to misread things. We need to be careful. So let's work everything out, see what we get. So on the left side, we end up with x squared plus 6x plus 9 is equal to, on the right side, we get 100 minus 20 times the square root of x minus 3 squared plus y squared. And when we work this out, we get plus x squared minus 6x plus 9. And now we can cancel out some things. Let's see what we can cancel out next. We have an x squared and an x squared. Those cancel out. And we have a plus 9 and a plus 9. Those cancel out. 
Okay, so now what we can do is we can move things over to one side and leave the radical on the other side. So I can maybe put one more line in there. So 6x, move this across the other side, that becomes a plus 6x or 12x, minus 100 equals a minus 20 times the square root of x minus 3 squared plus y squared. Okay. And now, if we take a look, we can divide this by 4, this by 4, and this by 4, so we can actually simplify it a little bit more. Makes it easier to work with, so let's come up here. Let's divide everything by 4, so that's what we're doing. Divide by 4, divide by 4, divide by 4. Which means on the left side, we end up with 3x minus 25 is equal to minus 5 times the square root of x minus 3 squared plus y squared. And now to get rid of that radical, we're going to square both sides again. All right, so we have to do it twice. So square the left side and square the right side. Okay, when we do that on the left side, we get 9x squared, twice the product of those two, that would be minus 150x, and this product would be plus 625 is equal to, this squared would be a positive 25, and times, uh, I might as well use brackets, brackets would be better, let's try that. Okay, so 25 times this quantity squared would be x minus 3 squared plus y squared. Okay, let's see here. What can we do next? Hmm, hmm, hmm. Five, six x. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply everything out and collect common terms. Let's do that. That might be the best thing to do. All right, let's do that. So we end up at 9x squared minus 150x plus 625 is equal to 25 times. In here, we end up with x squared minus 6x plus 9 plus y squared. So now we multiply the 25 with each term in here and see what we get. 9x squared minus 150x plus 625 is equal to 25x squared minus 150x plus 225 plus 25y squared. And then notice, we can simplify this by getting rid of the minus 150x on both sides of the equation. Now let's collect common terms. Here we can write this as 625 minus 225 equals 25x squared minus 9x squared and plus 25y squared. Simplifying that, we get 400 is equal to 16x squared plus 25y squared. And of course, to get the common form or the general form of the equation, we we'll want to turn this around. We write this as 16x squared plus 25y squared is equal to 400. Now, the way to do that is to take a look at these two coefficients. We're going to divide everything by the product of these two coefficients. So divide this by 16 times 25, divide this by 16 times 25, and divide this by 16 times 25. When you do that, the 16s cancel out. You get x squared divided by 25, plus the 25s cancel out. y squared divided by 16 is equal to this times this, that's exactly 400, which gives us 1. And then we rewrite this as x squared over 5 squared plus y squared over 4 squared is equal to 1. And there you go. That's how we find the equation of an ellipse when we're given the two foci and the distance of the string uh, that we use in order to draw the ellipse. And that's how we end up with the final equation of the ellipse. Kind of interesting, simply by using the distance formula. That's not finding, that's, you said deriving. You make it sound like you're deriving a general equation. Well, if we replace the plus 3 and negative 3 by 
some other number, some general number, then it would be the general equation. Using numbers it makes it a little bit easier to work with. I know. False advertising. Cheating? <laughs> Is that a physicist doing the mathematics? <laughs> <laughs> but it makes it easier to see. Mm -mm. Not general. <laughs>